Hi everyone, my name's Tamara Chambers and this is Tamara's Never Seen. Today I am finishing up the Cornetto trilogy with The World's End and honestly I'm a little sad to see it like be finished. I haven't heard very much about The World's End. I know that the first one was like a zombie film and then their buddy cop and this one's kind of like their sci-fi. But other than that, I, I know a lot less people have seen it than the other two. I know people usually say it's the weakest one. I wrote, the world's end predictions, give them to me. You have about an hour, black heart emoji, and then Martin Freeman saying, what's bike? So without further ado, we'll jump straight to it. What's the matter? You've never used shortcuts before? unpopular opinion about this film, you guys. I, I loved this movie. Also, yes, Martin Freeman again, but with what seems like a lead role versus just like a really small bit piece. So you've jumped from these five grade school guys to these five adult men, and Simon Pegg is going around as this kind of loser character who wants to hold on to his past, trying to get the guys to go back so that they can do the pub crawl that they never made. And he's playing such a different character, but the biggest surprise, and, and in such a good way, is Nick Frost's character, who is this sober businessman. He does it so well, he's so likable in this movie. And it's really exciting to watch him play something so different. You get cast as like the dopey best friend type, kind of. And it's cool to see tables turned. So the guys do not want to go and do this pub crawl, but Gary convinces them, and he's the worst. Simon Pegg's character, Gary King, is awful, but I love him in this. I think he's so, like you, I don't know. He's just very upfront about being awful, and everyone calls him out on being awful. You're the worst, Gary King. <laughs> It's good. I like that they're calling him out on it. I wrote down, I know that this is a sci-fi movie, but so far it's not that. And I would just be happy to watch this movie about these old friends reconnecting to do this pub crawl. I think I'm picking up on a few more things than I did in the first two, just because I know what to look for. Like every pub name kind of told what was happening in the story. They're in the fourth pub and Gary isn't getting along with his friends because he's the worst. He goes into the bathroom and invites this younger boy to go with him. And then they get into a fight and that's when the sci-fi element comes into play. And I completely forgot that this just wasn't like the OG hangover movie. Even though I knew it was coming the whole time, it still felt very exciting and like surprising. So the friends come in, they see that there's this robot with blue blood thing on the ground and they start taking out all these robots to decide that the town has been taken over by robots. I love the immediate belief in this. They all are on board. I also love the gore aspect in these movies. All three of them aren't, I wouldn't call them horror at all, uh, but They've got this insane amount of gore that's done really well in a movie that I would think would look way cheesier than it ends up looking. Like the effects of the deaths in the Hot Fuzz are just, are really good. Same in this, like the, the gore and, and the blue blood splurting out and like the, the mechanics of the robots are really cool. Sorry, not robots. Robot means slave. So they're all super drunk. They decide that if they don't continue with their plan to do the pub crawl, then every one of the robot Robots will know. They're trying to figure out what's happening, but they're also trying to do it with beer brain is ridiculous. You cannot get literally anything done when you're drinking beer. It's just impossible. Ah, tequila's fine. Oh God, it's 10.54. There's a crazy guy named Basil who tells Steve what's really going on. It's very They Live also, which I've seen, so I can say I know that reference. What's the name of that movie, right? So they're at Pub 9. Andy is getting very upset with all of the happenings going on. Abruptly takes out Martin Freeman's character and then rips open his shirt and yells, I f Andy is, 
by far my favorite character in this. And then again, there's an incredible fight sequence that's long, really well choreographed. Simon Pegg is an incredible physical mover actor, is which is the correct term for it. They do a callback again with jumping over fences. It's just mwah. Oh my, there's this girl that had tried to kiss Andy earlier to get his DNA. You know, us tricky women. Um, so she takes his wedding ring off with her mouth and swallows it. And she's like trying to seduce him so that he'll stop, you know, destroying all of her robot brethren. And she's like, I want you inside me, Andy. And he's like, okay. And then punches her stomach, takes his wedding ring back. It is just, ugh. I said this in the last one, there's just such good moments of seriousness. Gary has been in the hospital for self-harm, and at the beginning I thought he was just in AA. It's sad, it's really, really sad, and the character of Gary is so sad. He's just holding on to these glory days of high school. They make it to the final pub, the world's end. Gary opens up a beer spout and it triggers this whole thing. You go underground and that's where the network is. The Phobots are there. Then they escape the town in this fiery fury and you're like, okay, well, it's gonna be like Shaun of the Dead where everything goes back to normal and, and oh man, what a funny, weird thing that was a year ago. No, the whole world is in this post-apocalyptic like state of life now. Andy is telling this story to these children. There's the great moment with the Cornetto flapper, rapper flapping away. If you know anything about me and my video game loves, it's that I'm obsessed with Fallout. And so I love that kind of vibe so, 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 so much. And I dug it. I just wish that there was a second movie and then like, I wish that there was more to watch, honestly. This left me just wanting way more content than there is. And this is my unpopular opinion. This is my favorite out of the three films. I'm really excited to see the predictions because I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna be like, oh, you don't like it as much, but it's still fun. Nope, <laughs> this is my favorite one. Then Hot Fuzz, then Shaun of the Dead. Though Shaun of the Dead was such a good film. Um, just if I have to rank them. Obligatory political joke about the world ending in the real world. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. When you heard about the Golden Mile, you will be tempted to do one of your own. A couple years back with some other YouTubers, I actually did Drinking Around the World at Disney World, where you get one drink in every country uh, in Epcot, and I left around Mexico. <laughs> you will love the role reversal of Simon Pegg and Nick Frost and appreciate their acting talents even further. Yes, they're incredible together. They work so well off of each other and it was just, mm, ah, so good. What was that? Mm, ah. Tamar Chambers, what did you think about The World's End? Oh, I'll just let you know right now. Mm, ah. All right. Tamar Chambers, everyone. Please, I hope it's your favorite. I love it the most out of the whole trilogy. Oh, good, I'm so glad I saw that. Um, because a lot of people don't agree. Um, I'm sure you all think it's good as well, but like, I don't think many people love this the most. And it just is my favorite. You'll feel really bad for Simon Pegg's character when you learn the reason he's doing it. Yes. I wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting him to have a growing moment at the end, but to see the self-harm was so sad and something that is a, a really important thing to be portrayed, I think, on screen. And I, I think they handled it in a good way. Let me know what you think, but I think that they handled it really well. Hello, Ike. What's going on? Come here. That was so nice. You may miss the tiny thread that connects this movie with the two others in the trilogy. I don't, I think it still connects well. Maybe because I'm watching them boom, 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 right in a row, you know, that might help, just because they're all so fresh in my memory. I think a lot of people are thrown by the switch of characters with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, because I think a lot of people relate to Simon Pegg's character in the first two films. Even though he plays vastly different characters, I think people relate to those characters. The go-getter, but also, you know, sometimes the slacker. If you do relate to him really well, going into the third one and just being like, well, I don't relate to being an asshole, could be a little off-putting. That's like, 
theory I have. I don't know, maybe not. Hair flips for unpopular opinions, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out my Twitter. This week I'm going to be putting up definitely a poll for my next one. I really don't know what I'm doing for my next one. I'm looking for something in the veins of a weird 80s classic that I've not seen, maybe. That's what I'm feeling. But we'll see. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next week.